Alright, so an arbitrary complex number can be expressed as z is equal to x plus i y and then I can say the magnitude of that complex number or its distance from the origin is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and more generally it really is the square root of the real component of z squared plus the imaginary component of z squared. So if I have the condition that the model z is less than or equal to 4, this means that all complex numbers that satisfy this condition must be at a distance of 4 or less units from the origin. And this can be mathematically expressed as the square root of x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 4. And then if I take the square of both sides of this, I'll get x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 4 squared. So from plane geometry, this is the expression for a circle of radius 4 centered at the origin, 0, 0. So on the complex plane, it would look something like this. So excuse my wobbly lines. I have the imaginary component on the vertical axis and I have the real component on the horizontal axis. And the complex numbers can lie on the edge of the circle of radius 4. So again, excuse my wobbly circle. So this circle supposedly has the radius 4. Well, this supposed circle has the radius of 4. And they must lie inside of this circle. So the locus is simply a disk centered at the origin of radius 4. And of course, this locus in mathematics simply means all points that satisfy an equation or a condition. Let's look at another case, example 2, where the modulus of z is less than or equal to 4, but it is also greater than 2. So this means that any complex number satisfying this condition must be at a distance between 2 and 4 units from the origin. But the lower bound of 2 is exclusive, so it uh, must be greater than 2, but the upper bound of 4 is inclusive, so the complex number can be 4 units from the origin. So what does this look like on the complex plane? So we still have the imaginary on the vertical axis and the real on the horizontal axis. The outer limit is still a circle of radius 4, But this time we also have a inner limit of radius 2. Now the outer circle is a solid because it is inclusive and the inner circle is a dashed line because it is not inclusive. So again, complex numbers satisfying this condition can't actually be at a distance of 2 from the origin. They must be a little bit greater. So the locus looks like a donut centered about the origin and the hole in the middle of the donut has a radius of 2. Now example 3, let's look at the case where the modulus of z minus 2 is greater than 5. Now initially this minus 2 in here will make it a little bit more tricky to understand what's going on but if we write out z in terms of its components x plus i y so we have x plus i y minus 2 and the modulus of this expression is greater than 5 then I can group the real and imaginary components of this expression together so I can group x minus 2 
and the plus IY is the imaginary component so it stays the same so the modulus of this is still greater than 5 and now remember I said at the beginning that the modulus of a complex number is the square root of its real part squared plus the imaginary part squared so I can write this as the square root of x minus 2 which is the real part squared plus y squared and it's greater than 5 of course and if I take now the square of both sides I get x minus 2 squared plus y squared is greater than 5 squared now x minus 2 squared plus y squared is equal to 5 if you remember from plane geometry is the equation of a circle that is centered at about x is equal to positive 2 and y is equal to 0 so we have a circle of radius 5 that has had its center shifted from the origin across by 2 units to the right so on the complex plane it looks like this So again, my imaginary is on the vertical and my real is on the horizontal. And if positive 2 is about here, so my circle is centered at uh, 2, 0, and it is a dashed circle because it is exclusive. So that means the complex numbers cannot lie on the edge of the circle. And of course, the radius of this circle is... 5 so this extremity here is the point 7 0 and this extremity here is the point negative 3 0 so the locus is this shaded region outside of the circle out to infinity in all directions Okay, the final example, example 4, shade the region on the Argan diagram where the two inequalities, mod of z plus 2 is greater than or equal to 2, and mod of z minus i is less than or equal to 1, both hold. Well, for the first inequality, mod of z plus 2 is greater than or equal to 2 on the complex plane. where the imaginary is always on the vertical and the real is always on the horizontal. This is a circle that is centered at the point negative 2, 0. So if negative 2 on the real axis is here, then the circle has its origin at the point negative 2, 0 and it has a radius of 2 And the edge of the circle is a solid because complex numbers that satisfy this condition can actually lie on the edge of the circle. And for mod of z minus i, this is a circle that is located at the point 0, 1, 0, positive 1 I should emphasize. It is a circle that is being shifted up by 1 unit. And again, it is also a solid circle because complex numbers satisfying this condition can lie on the edge and it has a radius of 1 alright complex numbers that satisfy the condition that mod of z plus 2 is greater than or equal to 2 uh, lie in the green region and this of course goes off to infinity in all directions and complex numbers that satisfy the condition that z minus i is less than or equal to 1 lie inside the circle that is shaded magenta. Okay, but for both of these conditions to hold, most of this green shaded region is invalid because it lies outside of the circle mod of z minus i. So most of this green shaded region is invalid and this uh, magenta region here that lies inside of the bigger circle is also invalid because complex numbers must be outside of the bigger circle so this little region also has to be deleted
So now the only region that satisfies both conditions is the purple region that is outside of the bigger circle but that's also contained in the smaller circle. So this locus has this weird shape here. It looks much rather like a moon in its uh, waxing crescent phase or first quarter phase. If you have a better answer let me know but uh, you get the idea anyway. If you have found this video useful please give me a thumbs up and please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more helpful math tutorials. In the meantime, best of luck with your math studies and I'll see you on the next video.